Audio morning brief for July 18th, 929 a.m. Eastern Time and Rich Paz for Critical Point. This is also a snapshot of the weekly update. The weekly update, I think, is over an hour, hour and a half. Um, I think a lot of good information, and it's very important that we do take more time to analyze, think, discuss, and therefore, from my service, uh, present more. Not so sure we can really dig up fresh new ideas, but I really did a nice, I think, tried my best to explain this minor long-term stop business and how we are coming to an extreme here for the market. Yet, it's one of those weird times when it may not matter, okay, that we need to focus on still larger up moves, longer up moves, okay? So, hopefully, this is a little snapshot to simplify what we're looking at and some of the also complications and problems. All right, so the market sold off. It was one of the worst selling sales in since 2022, I think, for the NASDAQ on a daily basis. With any luck at all, the market is bottoming today, if, uh, if not yesterday, uh, moves higher tomorrow for the level four interweek swings, and that somehow this builds into a level three up move when the market will be higher next week. Problem with that thinking is we might get a level four upswing in tomorrow, only see it go lower the next couple of trading days, put it down into next week, in other words, for the latest for a level three bottom, which is probably Wednesday of next week. So we got this time frame where we're looking for all these ingredients and conditions here when those monthly type traders are going to swing the other way and buy. And it's looking like they ought to put the market higher next week. Okay. Now, um, the dilemma here is if they put it higher next week, what are they going to do in the following weeks? If they put it lower than the lowest price this week next, uh, I would be concerned there's issues, there's problems for a while, okay? The other way of looking at it, however, if they can put it up next week and not put it down, if they can actually push it higher into early August, that's a signal it ought to be stable to higher into late August and any serious selling may wait till September, okay? That would also be a clue there's a chance to be higher in November, record high, okay? And yet we would still be due for some serious decline maybe from November into February. And this can come and go for a while. And what's going on is the model saying we're increasing the odds that instead of, uh, that there's a little more downside in these normal fluctuations within the standard operating procedure. We may now see more of the three to 5% drops than we've seen in a while. We may see more of five to seven. We may see, and we should see at least one seven to 11% drop Anytime now into next year, well into next year, the longer time you give it, we might even see two or three of them. And yet, even with all that, the market's likely going to be up next year. It's probably going higher into, into 2026. Another frustrating thing is they bought so much of those uh, other stocks, a wall of money, boatloads of money have come in to shove it higher that is distorting some of these uh, indicators and some of this modeling that I do, but I'm not the only one, a lot of people are seeing it, because you have st things going up that haven't gone up in quite a while, you have things that have been going up for a long time going down, it's impacting these major indexes to look like it's more down than up, when in reality, it's probably more up than down. So it's gonna be coming and going here because of politics election. It's also gonna be coming and going because of Fed Reserve, which is far more important than the politics right now, Fed Reserve and interest rates. So my thoughts are come July 31st, the Fed may say something that's gonna cause it to be down for quite a while. The Fed may say something that's actually gonna put the market up in early August that tells us it's probably gonna be up for August and probably will be higher in November, even though I think it'll probably sell off in September, October. So if you write this down, if you're listening to this, it might sound confusing, but if you write it down, you can say, hey, this is how it's bouncing up and down, and we got different timing of it, different scenarios there. And that's what we're up against. Meanwhile, for this minor long-term stuff, we're now at the point of about the latest allowed for a minor long-term top that occurs every other year. We are due for, uh, it's a type of top or sell signal that occurs four to five to six times a decade and that fourth or fifth or sixth one is even more important than that. So if you strip those out, what you're really saying is, is we ought to have three, five, three to four to five sell signals during a decade 
They're just not as important as the others, but they're quite important. And it can be down minus seven to minus 36%, rarely more than minus 20%. And I do not see down more than minus 20%. In fact, I don't even see minus 20%. I think it's gonna be down minus seven to minus 11% sometime now in the next year, maybe more than once even, okay? And yet, I still say the market's going higher into 2026, then maybe a 20% drop, then still higher into 2028 to 2031, okay? So those are the sequencings here, and, and, and we, we push that out for the forecast. Then we work it backwards to see does the forecast still make sense. So keep an eye on some of these economic indicators and earnings, just like we always have to, the inflation, the Fed Reserve, the interest rates. Jim Paulson, uh, Paulson Perspectives, I think. I haven't read the article yet today, but he made some comment that it looks like there's building pressure of lower bond yields. So he's talking lower interest rates. Seems like that would be a positive thing for the stock market. However, that may accompany more deteriorating economic indicators, okay? Now, uh, I haven't read John Arthur's letter this morning, but I saw one of the headlines of one component of his daily letter it was saying Trump's probably gonna find it frustrating or difficult, I should say difficult, to get a lower dollar or that the lower dollar will mean what he wants it to mean, which is kind of a boosting economy. But I haven't read why John is saying that, but uh, that is something to, else to think about that I did not put in the weekly update. All right, at any rate, um, that's my best scenario is the market is gonna recover some here. The Dow Jones Industrials, I spent a lot of time showing how strong that is. And it was, should be higher next week as well, uh, which is a change in the model forecast, change as of this morning. It ought to be higher as well. The problem is that's conflicting with some of this weakness in the S&P 500 and NASDAQ when they, so I'm assuming the NASDAQ and S&P 500 are going to bounce by next week to get in line with the Dow Jones. But I'm also concerned the S&P 500 and NASDAQ are telling us they would actually prefer to go down quite a bit and for a while. So I'm wondering, is this going to be just a blip up for a second sell uh, top? Is it going to try to hang in there to July 31st and then maybe they don't like what the Federal Reserve says and they sell it? Can they sell it for other reasons in August? So we got to watch out July 31st, watch out for a chance to bounce up next week, but it might be a bit of a fake out here or a last up move for some of those stronger indexes. And then we have to think, uh, even if we can find a reason to turn bearish by the end of this month, and this is a perfect time for that minor long-term top right here, right this month, right now, okay? But the problem is the market may change its mind, put it higher in November still, then top, but this is a good time to do it. So the point is, I'm looking for the reasons to throw more darts here at it, but if it's higher in early August, I'm afraid we have to flip back to being bullish and give it a chance to go higher in late August. Then we might have to flip bearish yet again, even though we're gonna have to flip bullish maybe by November, only to flip bearish yet again at early next year. <laughs> And all of this has to do with some of this complication and some of this minor long-term stuff that's not going to work out to be an actual bear market. It's not going to work out to be actually long-term, but it's there to cause some extra issues with everything. Once that clears up, it's up and away for 2025. So if all these gyrations and forecasts are too much for you, if you're a long-term investor, you just gotta realize, yep, your account's going up and down, up and down, up and down. But when looking out to 2025, 2026, it's still a bull market and going up unless Trump's elected, which it may still be up in 2025, 2026. But there may be other problems and complications to think about as well. All right. At any rate, uh, that's my best forecast. Let's give it the chance for the market to bounce here in tomorrow for level four. Give it a chance to bounce into next week for level three. But we got to keep digging here. Of, is there any real serious, important uh, sell signals here that could uh, we could benefit from to buy back much cheaper as well as things to worry about for the economy and the stock market long term because we're in that time frame and I give you the statistics and the history that I learned going back to 1940 if not back to 1880 if not even before that so if you get a chance can listen to the entire thing stop it started great but that's your snapshot this morning what I'm looking at higher tomorrow higher next week 
got to look out for complications and problems, some kind of sell signal now into the end of the month and have something to do with the Federal Reserve July 31st versus higher in August, probably a signal that they'll be higher in late August, but a signal that even if it's down in September or October, and likely will be, it can still be higher in November. That's what we're working at. Past results and understanding take a future results. Also, I discussed the gold that probably has higher to go in the next few months here and at least the next few weeks for a smaller trend. Bitcoin looking very well for the next few weeks anyways. Uh, interest rates really sluggish and a bit uh, concerning in the sense of uh, are they too quiet? And also that the stock market right at the moment isn't paying any attention to it. Dollar index dropping the way it's supposed to, looking really good, should drop a bit more, but might put the brakes on. But the interesting thing is the stock market doesn't seem to care. It should have been a little bullish about that. I think we got a real strange moment here that there's so much money buying all those other stocks and selling NVIDIA and Magnificent 7. However, someone else is buying those stocks because they, they should have fallen more than that relative to the amount of selling and rotation. So I think this rotation thing's a little bit overdone by Wall Street in terms of explanation and news stories. The real story is a wall of money come in, boatloads of money come in to buy all those other stocks. Plus, they sold some Magnificent Seven and moved those into other stocks and maybe even put a little bit in bonds and CDs and money market. But overall, what is the summary? huge amount of money come in to buy a huge amount of different stocks someone believes yeah we are changing something major and it has to do with the idea they're betting the fed reserve is going to lower interest rates mid-september what if they are disappointed and take that versus the idea the economy is probably going to continue to grow anyways and then throw in the election and inflation thank you past results not necessarily take a future results have a great day